If you have been keeping an eye on the channel, you probably remember the scroll carousel we explored last week from this site. But as I kept digging through the rest of it, I realized it had a lot more to offer, especially in terms of scroll animations and visual inspiration. On the home page, there is this one section that really stood out to me. As you scroll down, the entire section gets pinned while the background images keep moving, creating a layered cinematic feel. And then comes the standout moment. The image begins to reveal, but not in a typical way. Instead of a basic fade or clip, it's revealed through a custom shaped mask, unveiling the image underneath as it scales up with your scroll. It creates this smooth parallax effect that looks super clean and satisfying to watch. Personally, I found it really cool and realized we haven't covered anything quite like this on the channel before. So while I was working on this month's website template, I decided to experiment with this concept and adapt it in a creative way. The best part is you don't need to know any advanced GSAP or scroll trigger to build something like this. In today's video, I'll show you how I created this scroll animation using just HTML, CSS, GSAP, scroll trigger and split text plugin. It's also fully customizable. You can swap this plate shape with any other SVG or even your own logo and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So you can easily reuse this in your own projects. If you find my work helpful, give this video a like and make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you want to access the source code for this project along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. Before we dive into the code, let's quickly go over the only asset you will need for this animation, a simple SVG shape. For this project, I grabbed this free clonable from the Figma community resources and all I did was export this icon as SVG and put it in the public folder, nothing more. Now you can use any SVG shape you like here, your own logo, a custom symbol or any abstract form. But there is one important thing to keep in mind, make sure your SVG has a transparent center, in other words. The middle part of the shape should be empty. If there are design elements or fields in the center, the image underneath might not show through the mask. So ideally, your SVG should be a solid shape with a hollow or cutout center. That's what makes the reveal effect work. Once you have got that ready, you are good to go. Let's move on to the HTML. We'll begin by adding a simple dummy navbar. This is just for aesthetics. All I'm doing here is creating a nav element and placing a logo image inside. Totally optional, you can skip it if you want. Next, we need to define three main sections for our scroll experience. An intro section, the spotlight section where all the animation happens and an outro section to wrap things up. Inside the intro section, I'll create a header container and drop in an H1 with some placeholder text. This is just to keep the section from feeling empty and we'll do the exact same thing for the outro. I'll copy that same header structure and paste it into the outro section, updating the text slightly to fit. Now for the spotlight section, we'll add one more header here. This will be the initial text that shows up when the section comes into view before the animation begins. Below that, we need a container for the animated background image grid. I'll call this spotlight images. Inside it, we'll create a few rows. Each row will contain four columns, which I'll wrap in a class called image. To keep things simple, I'll be using Flexbox for the layout, but you can use CSS Grid or whatever you're comfortable with. It doesn't affect the animation logic. In some of these image containers, I'll drop in actual image tags and leave others empty. This creates a nice staggered grid where some blocks are blank. Each image wrapper will get Flex1 to emulate distribute the columns and keep everything responsive. Next, we'll create a separate container called mask container. This is where the magic happens. Inside this container, we'll add two elements, one for the masked image, the image we are going to reveal, and another header with an H1 that will animate word by word once the reveal is complete. And that's pretty much it for the structure. Now let's move on to styling. First, I'm importing a condensed font from Google Fonts. This is the one I'm using throughout the project. Then, I'll add a basic CSS reset using the universal selector, removing all default margins and paddings and setting box sizing to border box across the board. Next, I'll style all the H1 elements. I'm setting them to uppercase and giving them a larger size with heavy weight, tight line height and a bit of negative letter spacing to make them feel bold and compact. For all image elements, I'm making sure they stretch to cover their container completely using width and height set to 100% and object width set to cover. Now let's style the navbar. I'm positioning it fixed at the top center of the screen, giving it a width of around 35%, adding some padding and using flex to center the logo inside. 
I've also applied a slightly transparent white background with a blur effect and soft border for that frosted glass aesthetic. The logo inside is scaled down to fit neatly within the navbar. Next, I'll style each section. All the sections take a full width and full height of the viewport. I'm giving them a dark background and setting overflow to hidden to prevent scroll bars from showing. The intro and outer sections are both centered using flexbox vertically and horizontally. Then, I'll add a shared header style that positions each heading in the absolute center of the section. I am aligning the text in the middle and giving the header a fixed width so the lines wrap nicely. The spotlight section gets a slightly darker shade of black just to help it stand apart from others. Now for the spotlight images, the container that holds all the moving image rows. I am absolutely positioning it at the top, stretching it to full width and giving it a height of 300 view height units. I am using flex in column direction and spacing the rows evenly. I am also offsetting it slightly with a vertical translate and setting wheel change to transform to help with performance during scroll. Each row inside the grid is a flex container with padding and some gap between columns. Then, each image column gets a flex value of 1, so they distribute evenly and I'm giving them a 5 by 7 aspect ratio with overflow hidden to crop the images cleanly. For the images themselves, I've reduced their opacity slightly and desaturated the colors so they appear faded out in the background. This makes that reveal effect stand out more later. Now we'll move on to styling the mask container. This is absolutely positioned full screen and I'm applying a custom SVG as the mask using both the standard and WebKit mask properties. The mask is centered and set to contain. Initially, I'm setting the mask size to zero since we'll scale it up later using scroll trigger. I'm also giving it a high index so it sets above the background images. Inside the mask container, the image we want to reveal is stretched full width and height to cover the container. Lastly, I'll add a responsive tweak using a media query for smaller screens. When the screen width drops below 1000 pixels, I'll reduce the font size of the headings and make sure the navbar and headers shrink accordingly. I'm also stretching the spotlight image grid wider and offsetting it slightly to keep things balanced on mobile. That's it for the base styling. Next, we'll dive into the JavaScript and bring everything to life with GSAP and scroll trigger. Before we dive into the animation logic, let's start by setting up the essentials. We'll be using GSAP as our main animation engine, scroll trigger to tie animations to scroll progress, split text for animating individual words, and Lannis to apply smooth scrolling across the page. At the top of the file, we'll import all four of those libraries. Once that's done, we'll wait for the DOM to fully load before running anything. This just ensures all the HTML elements we are targeting are present before we start applying animations to them. Inside that event listener, the first thing we'll do is register both scroll trigger and split text with GSAP. This is required anytime we use these plugins. Now let's set up smooth scrolling. We'll create a new instance of Lennis which will take over the default scroll behavior and give us a much more smoother feel when scrolling through the page. To keep everything in sync, we'll update scroll trigger on every scroll event from Lennis. Next, we'll use GSAP's internal ticker to drive Lennis's update loop. Finally, we'll also turn off GSAP's default lag smoothing. Lennis already handles that internally and turning it off avoids any unwanted drift or delay in animation timing. Once the scroll system is ready, we'll move on to selecting the elements we need. First, we grab the container that holds all the background images. This is the part that scrolls upward behind the mask. Then, we'll grab the full screen mask container. This is where the reveal happens as the mask shape expands and the background image scales up. Inside the mask container, we'll also select the image that will be revealed and the heading text that appears once the animation completes. Now, we'll define a few values we'll need to calculate movement later. We'll get the height of the entire spotlight container, the one with the image grid. We'll also grab the height of the viewport so we know how much vertical space is currently visible. Then, we define a small offset value which is 5% of the container's height. This matches the CSS transform we applied earlier using translate Y. It's important that this offset is accounted for here, so our scroll-based movement lines up correctly later on. Finally, we calculate the total movement distance we'll need for the image grid animation. We do that by adding together the container height, the initial offset, and the height of the viewport. This total tells us how far the background should travel while we scroll through the spotlight section. At the end of the setup, we'll prepare the final header animation. If the heading exists, 
will use split text to break it into individual words. Then we'll set the opacity of each word to zero so they are hidden by default. We'll reveal them one by one later in sync with scroll progress. That wraps up the initial setup. Next, we'll create a scroll trigger that brings everything to life. We'll target the spotlight section as our trigger since that's where the main animation takes place. We'll start the animation when the top of that section hits the top of the viewport and we'll give it a custom scroll distance 7 times the height of the viewport. That extended range gives us enough scroll space to animate everything gradually. We'll pin the section in place while the animation runs which creates that scroll hijack effect and makes the section feel immersive. We are also enabling pin spacing so the layout doesn't jump or collapse when we pin the section. Next, we'll set the scrub value to 1. That means the animation will follow our scroll position smoothly instead of applying on its own. Inside the on update callback, we'll track the scroll progress using a value that goes from 0 to 1. We'll use that progress to animate the background image grid. Now here's how this part works. While we are in the first half of the scroll, that is, while progress is less than or equal to 0.5, we want the image grid in the background to move upward as user scrolls. We'll calculate how far through that first stop we are by dividing the scroll progress by 0.5. That gives us a value from 0 to 1 just for this background movement phase. Then we define our movement range. We'll start the grid at 5% lower than its normal position. This is to match the CSS transform we applied earlier. We want the images to move all the way up to a point where they have fully cleared the mask and to calculate that, we divide a total scroll movement by the container height and multiply it by 100. This gives us a percentage value we can use in the animation. Finally, we interpolate between the start and end values based on the scroll progress. This gives us the current vertical position of the image grid at any given scroll point. We'll update the image containers transform using that value so the background moves smoothly upward while we scroll to the first half of the animation. That completes the background part. In the next part, we'll animate the SVG mask and the image reveal. This is the part where the image underneath gradually appears through the SVG shape. First, we'll check that both the mask container and the image inside exist. If they do, we'll animate them between 25% and 75% of the scroll range. This middle band of the scroll timeline is where the reveal happens. To calculate how far along we are in that band, we subtract 0.25 from the scroll progress and divide the result by 0.5. That gives us a value from 0 to 1 again, representing the full range of the reveal. Now we'll scale the size of the SVG mask using that progress. At the beginning of the reveal, the mask is completely collapsed. As we scroll through this phase, we'll scale it all the way up to 450%. This gives us that sharp expanding blade effect where more of the image becomes visible as the mask grows outward. At the same time, we'll scale the image inside the mask. It starts zoomed in at one and a half times its normal size and gradually scales back down to its original size by the time the mask is fully expanded. This creates a cool parallax effect we saw in the demo. Now, we'll also account for the scroll before and after this range. If the scroll is below 25%, we'll reset the mask size back to 0 and scale the image back up to 1.5 so it's fully hidden and zoomed in. And if the scroll goes beyond 75%, we'll lock the mask at full size and the image at its final scale so everything holds ready for the final stage. Now let's animate the heading that appears at the end. This happens between 75% and 95% of the scroll. We'll calculate the progress through that range the same way by subtracting 0.75 and dividing by 0.2 so we get a value from 0 to 1. Then we'll loop through each word we split earlier using split text. We'll gradually fade them in one by one based on their position in the list. This creates a simple but effective word by word reveal that feels timed with the scroll. If the scroll is before 75%, we'll hide all the words. If it's after 95%, we'll make sure they are all fully visible. And that's it for the scroll trigger animation. We have now got a smooth image grid movement, a mask reveal, a zooming image, and a word by word text reveal, all tied to the user scroll. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.